Alright, after this video, little cat. Yes, a good way to start a video about what life is, is to have a cat. Cats are always good for stuff and a cabbage. Yay, cabbage. Uh, anyway, um, uh, okay, let's hit it again. Uh, universe, okay, who knows where it came from, what happened, um, but matter is basically energy, things, moving things, are chasing peace, in a sense. They're looking for it. They're... They're flying around saying, where is it? <laughs> uh, stop me if you can. Uh, they do seem to be temporarily um, contained within these uh, atoms. So when there's an atom formed, what basically happens is a bunch of movement, a bunch of photons or whatevers, uh, you know, gets caught up in it and stays there for a while. <laughs> you know, maybe a long while. Um, in a structure. And uh, it's contained. And when we release it, it's a nuclear bomb, boom. We can see that there's a tremendous amount of uh, movement that's been contained in those atoms. Tremendous, tremendous, preposterously huge amount. So anyway, the universe is preposterously huge. <laughs> yeah, preposterously. And uh, it's just this matter, this, this stuff. We won't call it matter because we call it traditionally matter and uh, stuff that's caught up in it. Um, so anyway, yeah, so this is, this is what matter does. Uh, this is what energy does. It gets caught up in this thing called matter, and uh, over time, it coalesces. That's what's been going on anyway. Suns form, they get very dense, a nuclear reaction is triggered, and they start shooting a bunch of photons uh, out into the uh, universe. And uh, if there's planets around that sun caught in a gravitational attachment, uh, because they're seeking, in a sense, um, yeah, they'll be exposed to these photons, this energy. And this energy will come down from the sky onto the surface of the planet, and it will uh, energize the atoms. And uh, they'll move around. <laughs> yeah, that's what's going to happen. So... Um, on planet Earth, what happened was there was chemistry, a bunch of atoms connected to each other. They associate with each other and form compounds. And uh, they bounced around, bounced around for millions of years, and something happened. We, we don't know what exactly it was, but there was a moment where conditions were ripe, and uh, a DNA molecule was formed, and formed in such a way as it was associated with other compounds, that allowed it to make a copy of itself. A copy capable of reproducing itself, of copying itself. So it's basically a, a, a Xerox machine that gave birth to a Xerox machine. And they just kept Xeroxing Xerox machines. Now the trick is, is that the, uh, the process allows for error. And so through errors, uh, through making mistakes in the copies, imperfections, um, that are duplicatable, that happen on the blueprint, on the DNA molecule. The DNA molecule is basically a blueprint on how to make a Xerox machine. And so mistakes happen on that molecule, and those are transferred to the copy. And, the, and, and those mistakes that are in some way advantageous to the organism, like it's made bigger, or it's given a more fingers, or it's given something. I'm, I'm speaking of organisms further along. Well, let's just say on the cellular level, there'll be advantage to uh, cells that can move faster, or had a bigger mouth, or had more acid, or more something in their system to, able, to enable them to more easily capitalize. And capitalize in the sense of doing this consumption thing, finding other packets of energy, find other things that have a lot of atoms in it, um, atoms that can release their energy easily, or compounds more specifically, that is associated atoms. When you rip some atoms that are together apart, you will release energy that can be gleaned um, by these moving things. And uh, so that's the, the chase is on. Uh, everything's chasing uh, this capacity to do something, to metabolize, to make fluids move. Even trees are moving fluids through them. They're doing chemistry every day. And uh, so they're, they're active, they're just active in an internal structure. Um, obviously we're a lot more active, a lot more um, uh, energetic, and so we need a lot more energy 
to do what we do. So we have to consume. The easiest way to get it is to consume something like ourselves. Consume something that's a, a full um, component of, of energy built into it. It's already got a battery, so to speak. Um, and so that's the game. So for a couple of billion years, um, life, uh, for four billion, but for the last two billion and for maybe the last 500 million, very complicated machines have been created through this error process where there was advantages to having arms and legs, advantages to doing sex the asexual way, I mean the bisexual way where you would, you would in double or, or multiply by four or 10 or 16 the permutations, the error permutations by combining uh, genetic material because that process itself will create errors. So you're multiplying your opportunity for advantageous evolution per generation. And that's really what it's about. And uh, we can obviously see the errors that are produced in even human um, replication, um, often hideous errors. Uh, but nonetheless, they're still produced because they um, were built to uh, modify, to adapt. And the only way you can do that is to change. This, so the Xerox machine over this period of four billion years has substantially changed. It has all these different variations. Model 1, Model 2, Model 3, Model 5, Model a billion. So there's been a billion models of DNA molecule. And they're just on this earth um, striving um, because of how they've been built to do one thing and that is to reproduce themselves. They're Xerox machines. That's what they do. They reproduce. That's the, the prime directive of the biology. Uh, the prime directive of the, the mechanism. Uh, but obviously survival in this arena of a, of at any one moment there's literally multiple millions of species, multiple millions of kinds of things you're competing with for the energy that's coming from the sun uh, to, to uh, be able to do your movement and your metabolizing. Um, and so through that competition we have acquired very specific tools. Every organism has some sort of niche it's, it's, it's sitting in and it has tools that enable it to, uh, to capitalize. And uh, it's sometimes it'll change those tools every hundred years or so. It'll, it'll modify because of invading species. It'll come in and it'll have to change. I mean, it doesn't change deliberately, but it will. the errors that make it capable of surviving will be the survivable errors. They will be the new copy, the new model. Uh, you know, model 1,670,487. Um, and it'll be model C or D or E uh, because the change is small, slight, but it's still a change and it makes it unconsumable by the predator or some other thing. Um, and uh, that's the game. And so through this process, we've acquired this consciousness, this ability to feel and this ability to think, this ability to sense the environment and have an initial judgment that's, that's placed upon us uh, by our, our, our native metabolism, to create a motivating sensation. Um, it's too hot, it's too cold. It's, uh, you're hungry for it, you desire it, it appeals to some sense and creates a motivating sensation. Sensations can be textural, like I can feel the smoothness of that floor, or I could also feel its roughness or its irritation. I can smell you know, a different, I can make distinctions between odors, or odors can be intrinsically pleasant or intrinsically repulsive. Uh, they can, they can motive, they can, they can filter through our senses and create different kinds of sensations. Some that have no qualitative component, so they, they don't say anything like good or bad, and other sensations will say, I hate that, or I love that. And through this mechanism, the brain establishes for us this, this mechanism that will propel us through every day, that will get us to go out there and do what needs to get done to do our consuming, the necessary consuming, so we can do our reproducing, so we can fulfill the model design. This is what the model must do. It's a Model A, it drives on roads, it does it this way. We are established to do a certain thing by the biology. Now we also have this tool that allows us to, because we are a long evolved organism, 
we have these sophisticated tools, and so we have this tool that allows us to model the universe. We can, we can understand square, we can understand glass, we can understand components of the world. Um, this is probably developed because organisms had to navigate environments, they had to run from the, the aggressives, uh, and they had to chase the prey. Uh, so they had to be able to navigate their world, they had to be able to understand what they could do and what they couldn't do, how high they could jump, how, how big their body was. They had to understand all these things to uh, uh, accomplish the task. That was the demand of the machine. If the machine was going to survive, if its genetics were going into the future, it was going to have to be competitive with these other it, uh, organisms out there. It'd have to beat them up, it'd have to eat them, it'd have to be able to, 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 to get through them. It would have to be the better machine in that competitive environment, in that arena. It'd have to have the bigger knife. Um, and that's what our brain can do. This modeling thing is a very advantageous uh, tool to be able to understand what your adversary is going to do, to be able to anticipate its, its behavior, um, what it traditionally does, to be able to learn and establish a, a pattern. Um, huge advantage. And so now we have these two brains that are basically just one is creating a motivation for us and the other is scheming a strategy for us to get what we need to get to get rid of that repulsive feeling, the tension, the aggravation, uh, the, 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 the angst, uh, so we can derive this sensation of comfort and peace of mind and relaxation. And uh, that's basically the game. It's these, this, these negative sensations intrinsically in the sense that they are needful, uh, these irritations of fear and worry and angst and aggravation and I must get this done, I have to get this done and this isn't right and that isn't right because our our senses are sensing oh there's a piece of dough, there's a dead stink bug on that shelf, I gotta get that off I gotta, you know, we, we're always recognizing things that aren't, oh that's dirty there, I gotta fix that I gotta, they're always looking for the flaw, oh, there's, there's something that doesn't belong there we're always finding this stuff and our senses are reacting with a sense that we have to get rid of that, we have to fix that. Uh, and so our brain will do that. And, uh, and then for some of these, it works the other way around, where our brain will model the world and see that other people are, well, it's a husband and a wife and two kids and a picket fence. I don't have a picket fence and I don't have a wife and I don't have two kids. So somehow I have to change what I am so I can be what my model says is the thing to be. And so my senses, my feelings, can react to the images that are in my head. And the images that say, this becomes psychology, uh, that say I'm not doing the right thing, or I'm not in the right place, or there's dirt on my floor, there's, there's crud in my brain, there's nonsense in my life, I'm not complete, I'm not good enough, I'm not king of the world, I'm not what I think I should be. I haven't satisfied my model, what the model says is the right thing to be. How much time I got left here? Running out. Um, so this is the game we're caught up in. And it's just, it is all just this psychology. Just psychology of our attachments. We think we're doing something uh, personally interesting or relevant or necessary, let's even say. And, and it's just a molecule reproducing. We're just a Xerox machine underneath all this, these layers of dress and fluff. We, we've taken the basic functionality and, and, and deluded ourselves with a fake model, with a phony understanding. We've established gods or, or mystical natural purposes or some other kind of thing to say it all is doing something else. And no, it's just functioning as a Xerox machine. And just because we've, we've acquired a sense of some sort of grandeur, it's just a sense of a grandeur. There's none there. It's just a functional biological machine that's doing its, its reproducing. Um, but it's not accomplishing thing, anything beyond that. And we have this price, which is we do suffer uh, with these sensations of irritation and unpleasantness uh, that can be very harsh because the, the biology isn't well regulated. There's nothing in the competitive battle that cares about what you feel. It just cares about how well you perform. So yeah, it won't torture you enough where you're completely disabled and the Tyrannosaurus will eat you, or the bear, or whatever, the mountain lion, or whatever. Uh, but it will torture you up to that, up to that limit. It will give you as much as, uh, uh, suffering as is tolerable to keep you in the game. 
Uh, so anyway, that's probably enough. I'm running out of time. So anyway, until next time, such.